Hi students and welcome to today's presentation on the Great Migration. The Great Migration occurs um, mainly during the 1920s, but it does start a little bit earlier and ends a little bit after. But we're focusing on the 1920s because the movement of African Americans impacts the culture of the time, um, especially in art and music and living situations as well. Um, so the first thing you can do is think back to the situation of African Americans after Reconstruction. Um, remember the Jim Crow laws in the South, the unfortunate situation that they faced there with discrimination and prejudice and how difficult it is sometimes for African Americans to find a job or go vote um, or get the proper education that they are looking for. Um, so by the 1920s, many are fed up with this situation and make the choice to move. So looking at the map in the middle of your page, looking at the map in the middle of your page, um, you can see that the Great Migration refers to the movement of African Americans to the north and to the west. So they're coming out of the south. They're going north. They're going to the Midwest region, but you have to go north to get to the Midwest from the south. And they're going west to work in the different industries in those locations um, and to find jobs. Uh, migration is referring to the movement of these people. If you think about something familiar to you, birds migrate during the different seasons of the year, whether they're going south or north, uh, and the, we're talking about the migration of African Americans here. But if you forget that what that word means, you can think about the birds. Now we're working our way down the gray box on the right side of the map. There are three main causes for the reasons that people move out of the South and choose to go to the North, to the Midwest, and to the Midwest, and the West. The first one is that jobs for African Americans in the South were scarce and low paying. And I'm sorry, jobs should have been underlined too. It's not on this slide, but it's the first blank there. Um, so even if the African Americans were able to find a job working in the South, they typically got very low pay, much lower than a white person, and they were scarce. Scarce means that there aren't very many of them and they're difficult to obtain. So even though there's no more slavery um, in the sight of the Constitution, African Americans are equal to whites, they're still being treated in a different way and unfairly. The second reason is that African Americans are facing discrimination and violence in the South. Uh, there's many groups of Southern whites who um, treat African Americans differently based on how they look, based on their culture, based on the fact that they previously had been slaves, even though they are now free. Um, and African Americans often find themselves in violent situations in the South. Um, and they're unfortunately not able to reach their full potential with education and jobs because they're being held back by the attitude of the other people surrounding them and they don't get those opportunities that they desire, which is another reason why they move. Um, you also think back to those Jim Crow laws, those laws that say you can only go um, here if you're black and here if you're white, the separate water fountains, the separate restaurants, and African Americans in many cases are sick of this, okay, and they're ready to be equal. If you remember W.E.B. Du Bois and Booker T. Washington, who are working towards that equality and ending segregation. Um, you know, now we're about 40 years at least after the Civil War and people are ready, 40, 50 years after the Civil War and people are ready for change and they're not seeing it. The third cause is that African Americans are moving to cities in the North, Midwest, and West in search of jobs or employment. Remember those industrial cities, okay? Many of them are in the North and the Midwest, we're starting to develop some also out in California. Excuse me. Um, many of those industries are looking for workers. They need people to come into the factories and do a job. And because there aren't enough white people to fill those jobs, they're going to employ African Americans as well. Unfortunately, in the North and the Midwest and in those cities, African Americans still face violence and discrimination, um, but oftentimes they do have more access to different opportunities based on jobs and education, but they still don't have full equality in those areas as well. So we're still working towards 
um, those equal rights, even in the 1920s. Finally, um, there's a lot of artists that take uh, this idea of the Great Migration and demonstrate it in their art. One of one famous painter, he's African American, is Jacob Lawrence, and he painted a series of paintings on the Great Migration, documenting the movement of African Americans from the South to the North, Midwest, and West. And you can see in this painting, there's a family or a group of African Americans on a train, and they're pointing out the window of the train as they're traveling, and they see steel factories or other factories um, that they could find a job in and potentially work in. Um, so you can see how he documents that movement uh, to add to that, to add to the culture of America. So on Friday, we'll look at the culture of America um, in the Harlem Renaissance in particular. So the Great Migration, just to remind you, is the movement of African Americans to the North, Midwest, and West. They want to escape the discrimination and violence of the South, and they want to search for those job opportunities and better opportunities. Don't forget to watch, um, rewind, and restart this video as many times as you need.